Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Rule the Waves as Japan episode number 13. So off camera, I did the renamings. We have all our destroyers renamed. I don't know if I paid enough tribute as I should have to the Honoka. This is our new Honoka class and it, despite the fact that we probably won't build more of them just because we just got five plus centerline turrets, which would make um, the new light cruiser we could design now already much better. But this is fitting for the Honoka who was an older ship herself. So this is an older light cruiser, uh, befitting her namesake, I think. And she'll serve very well. I mean, you can't get around this seven-sided, six-inch broadside, especially with two-and-a-half-inch belt. I find with this many turrets, belt armor is probably more important than turret armor. So that's I usually try to keep turret armor with belt. It was just a compromise because this thing was already 6,800 tons, and I wanted to get 27 knots. So I'm pretty happy with that ship still. And then, like I said, I did the renaming. You guys have done a really excellent job keeping the names thematic. So much so that I actually have trouble distinguishing between the game's random names and the, the user provided names from time uh, from time to time. And that's really high praise. I, I have to say that's awesome. I think everyone else will appreciate it too, you know. Especially if we have a lot of these thematic names. And then if you were just to see one like uh, stupid, stupid or something like that. Uh, like if that was the English name, it was like... Uh, Tom is cool. You know, it just would kind of a little bit break the immersion. And we've done a really good job sustaining that so far. Okay, so all those are renamed. I gave people two destroyers because we had plenty. And not many people requested those destroyers. They don't appear as much in the battle, so I, and they're a lower class of ship anyway. Um, so for all those reasons, I feel like two is fine. There's still three more unnamed um, Hakazi class ships, destroyers. So I guess we have one more... Let me know if I missed anybody who wanted a destroyer and didn't get one, but I went through my list and this is what I got. If you left your name, if you left any class available, I don't give you a destroyer by default since they are a little bit less common in the battles. I will give you light cruiser above, but um, if you want any ship, then yeah, there's probably three more and I could even make one more so that they could get two names each. Anyway, um, so moving on, I, re I retrofitted the Asama Maru off camera because it's just the minesweeper and I also looked into a armored cruiser so what I was thinking for this one is forward forward center line aft and aft center line there was a few discussions about aft center line and aft center line superimposed I'll show you these actually have no difference they both have okay wait 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 I might be completely wrong I was saying this on camera and nobody has corrected me yet but this could be amazing. Let me just delete this real fast. Oh my god. So I'm so happy people mentioned this. They talked about the aft super firing and I was putting the aft in. In fact, this is what I did, unfortunately, for the Honoka. Which means, let's just open the design of the Honoka. God, I feel... I'm learning something. Here we are like six series into the Rule the Waves and I'm still learning. Let's open this design and we did this so this won't be able to fire rear. Let's pretend if we were to redo it, we delete this one and add in instead the aft superimposed as a single. It would, oh, okay, very good. Well, I'm really happy we show this on camera at least because this has, I've never, I don't know why I've never looked at this. And I'm very happy people brought this to my attention. People, several people were asking why aft center line instead of aft super center line superimposed. I was almost sure that the aft center line superimposed was just another turret facing left right only, but apparently it doesn't. So thank you for bringing that to my attention. It's too late for us to save the Honoka in this sense, but uh, that's extremely good news, extremely good news. That means that the there is a real hope for a five center line turret um, ship, which people have been asking about because now we can get one other gun firing in the rear. It'll be kind of weird because it'll be more It'll be three turrets to the rear instead of two. Unless, perhaps, aft center, maybe aft center line superimposed does not function if you have aft superimposed. I don't know. So we'll, we'll have to find this out later. Regardless, let's, um, let's push on. So low budget for peace, but we have this naval treaty. Oh, I didn't show the ship. Looks like I cleared it already. So let's just go back. Auto design, maybe it'll give me something reasonable. Uh, yeah, so it was already giving, yeah, it was smartly giving me the superimposed the whole time. I didn't know that. 
I don't like this forward center line because it doesn't have any firing arc advantage. The turret faces backwards. So if it doesn't have any firing arc advantage, I just would rather get rid of the forward center line C turret and instead add the L. Double, are we doing double for this? We should be doing triple, I think. Let's increase at least the forward and aft. The strangest thing about this aft center line superimposed is aft superimposed requires extra weight per turret, but they're saying that aft center line superimposed does not. This is kind of game breaking. Not game breaking, that's an, an absurd exaggeration, but it certainly does change how I will design my ships. Um, we should be using this instead of aft superimposed all the time, since it's cheaper. And it has the same firing arc. I wonder if that's a bug. Uh, I don't... I don't know. Oh, anyway. So this is the... Let's see, 9-inch guns. This is more or less... Nope, not at all. This is more or less the design I came up with for... The Armored Cruiser. This down to 6... Two and five inch guns. It was something like this. And we can see, I can bring this down quite a bit. No, the speed should be 28. Um, you can see that it's not a bad ship. It's basically already a rival of our Azumo class. Um, lighter guns, obviously, 11 inch for, for those, and we have nine inch on this. However, it's still probably just as capable of destroying other armored cruisers, and if not those, anything lighter than that with as much ease or greater ease than the um, than the Zumo. However, it was also pointed out, I'm just gonna demonstrate this, but I'm gonna close it. Oh, medium range. Uh, because I don't have, it's not good for us to do redundant, don't, what is that, outside the frame. It's not good for us to do redundant things. So it's not good for us to do a redundant um, class. As Japan, we don't, we just can't afford the budget. We can't afford to make two different ship types of the same type, that means we'd be neglecting our dreadnoughts. And it's obviously, it's 1915 and Japan still does not have a dreadnought. So what we're gonna do is pocket the money, wait for another three years or until war begins to build our next ship, and then we'll get a dreadnought, hopefully worthy of our nation. So for now, I, and now we're just gonna probably just go into fast forward mode. Hmm. Okay, that's really good. 13 inch guns already much better. Oh, we, we have to do some retrofitting. Uh, that's probably could have done this off camera, but I know we got better five inch guns. So this is gonna cost a pretty penny. Director, yeah, okay, this is fine. Probably after this, we'll immediately get advanced director or something else. I mean, um, not advanced director, but improved director, just because then we'll have to once again retrofit the Nike, the, the sorry, the Izumo class for the third time and that would be annoying now that we have all of our destroyers out by the way these are one knot slow they're at 31 but once we retrofit them they should come back out as let's take this up oh okay now let's i just want to change it by a little bit so that it doesn't look like it's the same design just make sure it fools the computer <laughs> all right so let's save this a very cheap retrofit. 33,000. And they're all in. Okay, good. And we don't have the monthly bounce. God, did that? What is the thing that costs so much? This is not costing. Okay. Let's put the Mara Tenso on hold so that we actually have enough budget to finish something. These are not even going to improve the budget because these are just as cheap in. Uh, re reconstruction as they are when they are out sailing around. Three different, three additional battleships. Okay, we'll do it. I will always say we'll do it. We have six months to actually decide whether we want to do it. I don't think we'll be able to go to war in six months, and we won't, we won't be able to violate the treaty's ten-inch gun restriction. Yeah, we can go up to sixteen thousand five hundred because we're one of the not we're not part of the normal liberal democracies that actually have to follow um, the treaties. So we have an eastern 
government type. I don't even know what that means, but <laughs> the empire. Uh, what it means for us is that we can violate the treaty by 10%. Okay, so it looks like we can manage one more month. Oh, okay. Double torpedo mounts. British government doesn't have that yet? Yeah, go ahead. If we don't sell it to them, someone else will, right? So, might as well. And that allows us to re uh, retrofit the other battle cruiser. We'll probably... See, these guys are actually fine now. I think they have the better, if I'm not mistaken, they have the quality zero good. We probably won't retrofit these again. They'll make it until 1920s or so, and then we'll just start scrapping them. Uh, yeah, it's time for us to retrofit the two armored cruisers that we do still have. And... <laughs> Excuse me. I think it might be time to replace the machinery on these guys. I, I just want to note the cost increase. 875, so that's four months at 219, and now it's 10 months at 861. So it's like a 15 times increase in cost compared to just doing this. Which is probably like a thousand, so maybe maybe it's like a ten times cost if we do this. I don't know. It's really hard to. I think we'll leave the armored cruisers without better engines. Um, if we replace their machinery, can they get a better knot? We can get one knot. That doesn't seem worth it. We'll wait a while before we do machinery replacement. Maybe we can wait a while long enough to get. Um, yeah, I think it'd be good to get some better some better machinery before we replace things. Well, 115 is on the low side, but they'll just have to make do for now. And that's perfect. They've all finished their reconstruction. Now let's take a look and see what their speed is at. Hopefully 32 again. No, 31. Darn it. Maybe they patched that in. You used to be able to retrofit them and they'd go back to your original design speed. Wasn't there a ship, though? I mean, that's really unfortunate because it makes this destroyer much less useful. One single knot. Wasn't there uh, a ship that we retrofit that was faster and when, and it, when we retrofitted it, it was back slow? I honestly can't remember, so I'll have to trust the game that that is not the case. Okay, this is good for rate of fire. Yeah, so now we have the ability to do, we don't want to have as big penalties for um, the turrets below eight inches. So we can do, I think this allows us to do double turrets, six inch guns, but I'm not sure. Okay, we got all of these. This is a really simple class. We, it, it's probably worth it to design even another light cruiser now that we have, wait, can our light cruisers? They don't have surface mounted now, not yet. Because we don't need this design at all. What we can do is, like I'm just imagining it now, forward, aft, aft center line, aft superimposed, uh, I'll put the double turrets on the front still, DE, uh, but then we'll go to midship stuff. So forward center line, midship. Single. How many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is too many. <laughs> Let's get rid of the second after the line. What about this? It's so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. And this is doable. Crazy. Like, this is just a really good ship. At 5,200, we can probably squeeze a little bit of extra speed out of it. Maybe not with the coal-burning engines. 28 is doable. Yeah, this is, like, significantly less expensive than the Honoka class. 
unfortunately. 28 knots, but I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna design this yet. So that's just a nice test, a teaser for the possible future, but it's too close to our um, Honoka class, which is still pretty good. Okay, what are they building? 14 inch guns, we really could use higher caliber guns. Oh, okay, so I bypassed this, 159. Uh, who are we likely to go to war with? Germany, because we're close to war with them and I want to go to war to get rid of this treaty so I can pop in some dreadnoughts. And we want to take their colony. Okay, lots of stuff coming in. A good monthly balance now for us to start building up for our dreadnought. Just give us that better gun called caliber. Yeah, we'll sell Q ships. I don't care about those. Um, do we have any other retrofits we need to do? Probably the Azumi. Which will probably be as still another really good ship. It's basically a slightly inferior version of the Honoka, which is all already good. So let's get these guys to get, uh, we don't have director for light cruisers. So there's nothing we need to do actually to change these, this ship. I think we just save and retrofit as is, which is gonna reset all their experience, but it's time to do it anyways. They're like eight years out of the dock. So it's time. Now, before I get all of the Chiotas to go to port um, for retrofits, how are we doing in Southeast Asia? Yeah, we don't have any armored cruisers down there, and we don't have any battleships. So let's try to do an even split with our Mikasas, because my battle cruisers who don't have short range can move to fill in the void wherever we need them. So we'll have um, raw colony invasion power in both of the South, both of the Asias. Um, in, in terms of having these battleships, and then we'll be able to move whatever battle cruisers we need to the appropriate point to put additional colony invasion pressure. I think that's okay. I'd prefer not to do this, to mix up the ship classes like this. I'd prefer to keep all battleships in one, battle cruisers in another, but just because of the short range, we would lack flexibility if we don't do this. So I think it's good. And I'll also move both of my armored cruisers to the Southeast Asia. Yeah, okay, so we give that a turn. Rising threat from Germany persuades parliament to authorize additional funding for the Navy. Too bad, they don't know we are not gonna take advantage of it. Not for another two years. Private economy is coming through just enough. No, this can't be a new battleship. <laughs> I think my information is wrong. <laughs> My spies have not reported to me correctly. This can't be the new battleship for the... What the hell? It is. You have two turrets back here. Oh, because of the treaty. How did they get... Oh, there it is. 10-inch guns. Okay. So strange. We're not going to do something like that. We're just going to wait for the treaty to expire. Uh, sure. Okay, so now the Azumis are all retrofitted and we have some people in Southeast Asia so we can do a retrofit for our raiders. They've served us well, but I don't see them going much further. I'm definitely going to do just a nothing retrofit. Yeah, I guess we might as well bump up their rounds per gun a little bit because there's no other use for the extra weight they have. Yeah, okay, fair enough, fair enough. Show class, good. And we're still good on foreign uh, stations. Maximum publicity. I think our tensions with Germany have gone down, sadly. Better torpedoes, by the way, that's always good. Um, yeah, let's do this. Somebody will, oh, so the Ube, let's see, who was it? Unibe. Unibi. I don't know how to say Japanese words, unfortunately. But she's now elite. Maybe she already was, which would make it a waste, but... 
oil has been discovered in Cameroon. That'll make Cameroon a high priority for colonization. Although if we can get to 1920, I think everyone gets oil at that point. Oh yes, we'll take torpedo aiming system, definitely. No, it's submarines, but that's fine. Oh, those jerks. Send a note with the strongest diplomatic language. Don't even send diplomatic language, just tell them that we hate them and we want to go to war. Because I'd be happier with that. That's probably why they don't have admirals doing diplomacy. Getting that budget up pretty sizably. Alright, 10 inch guns. I'm going to do it just so this doesn't happen to be the next gun tech we research on accident. So I'll take it. Oh, all or nothing armor. Oh my goodness. Oh, the dream. It's kind of silly just because the way this world, this alternate landscape of the early 19th or 20th century, just the way it's playing out. We, as Japan, don't have a, a dreadnought. It's the mid-1910s. Um, there's just no threat of war, and this treaty have restricted those kind of things. It feels like realistic, though, that we wouldn't want to build a dreadnought under the treaty restrictions, and we didn't have the time because we were at war before then. Uh, yeah, so this is so interesting that we might actually go right from pre-war pre -war battleships all the way to all or nothing dreadnoughts, which is a pretty big leap, but... Uh, well, we'll have very good dreadnoughts when we get them, won't we? Okay, another thousand from private industry. Triple torpedo tubes. Wow, fantastic. So we can make an even better destroyer now, one that won't be as slow. But I'd, I'd rather wait till 1920 just to get oil, uh, oil burning. Oh, another thousand. Jeez. Come on, give us all or nothing. Yeah, we'll um, water down this proposal. We don't want... Social. <laughs> Silly. We'll take the unrest. It didn't even cause unrest. Germany's not happy with our, our welfare program, I guess. Um. Yeah, let's just say that to hell with Russia. Eh, it didn't really... It just put them at equal tensions with everyone else. Why? In fact, it's weird that why were we so friendly with them? It's our diplomats. Once again, they fail us. All right. We have an obsolete ship, the Kamikaze. I think the Akakaze class has run its course. At 28 knots, it's not really even fast enough to keep up with our, um, our newer ships. I guess it is 27 knots for them. But instead of rebuilding it, it's super cheap anyway, but I'm just going to scrap it. It makes me sad to do that because she served well, which means probably we should re rename a couple of these the Kamikaze again, but nah, well, maybe off camera. Okay, we can kick this light cruiser's butt if we just design a new light cruiser. Even our current one would kick its butt, but... <sighs> All right, one more year before we can get Wait, I thought that armor development was going to be all or nothing, but instead it was whole construction. Oh, what a bummer. 12 months left on the treaty. January 1918 is when everything goes our way. And we have the budget to do it. Just making sure we're not losing part of our budget to the finance minister coming in and spooning off from the top. Looks like we're okay on that front. Okay, one of our cruisers has run aground on the shore of a minor nation while performing an illicit intelligence operation. They threatened to impound the ship. Obviously, they're not going to... It's just a minor nation. This is Japan. We're trying to pretend we're a world power. So demand that they release the ship and send a strong squadron to underline the point. Okay, war with Germany becoming not just... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. we got to do something very quickly. I need, let's just take the bottom six ships and move them into Southeast Asia. 
they're all in Northeast Asia, which is where I want them if we go to war with um, Germany, because we will have a surprise attack with our just uh, torpedo boats on the German port. So I want to make sure we have enough in Northeast Asia, but that also reminded me to put my destroyers... Okay, we have 14. That's a good number. But we need to put some into Southeast Asia. Okay, we also want our raiders. I don't like how this doesn't break... It's so separated by class. Anyways, we'll get these guys to move into Southeast Asia. It's preparation. Zoomies can stay here. Uh, let's get an even split with our battle cruisers. Again, I don't know where they'll be needed, so just divide them. And probably it's also good for us to go to torpedo warfare. So, wow. Yeah, I don't think night fighting is as important. And to be honest, torpedo warfare affects night fighting anyway. So, seems like the best of all worlds. Oh dear, Germany and Russia signed a treaty to contain Japanese aggression. What the hell does that mean? It means all or nothing. Oh, I think that meant that Russia's tensions rise up with um, German. We have all or nothing armor. This is fantastic. Okay, but we still can't, for another eight months, build our new ship. I have a feeling that right on January 1918, when we can, when the treaty expires, is when we'll go to war anyway. So the Russians are building according to the treaty constraints. So my battle cruiser is perfect. This is one good reason why not building the armored cruiser was smart, because I have this Izumo, which could easily take down this armored cruiser. So it's, it's kind of nice that we didn't build it. Improved triple turrets. Very good. So we don't have a penalty for triple turrets. That means probably we'll be using triple turrets for the rest of the game. Another 1,000 from the... The private economy has really done well. Uh, shooting. Let's do it because we have the money to do so. Super Yamato, which is a light cruiser. It's very funny. People were commenting about kind of a bizarre name for a light cruiser. I'd agree, but at least it's somewhat thematic. So I'll still take it. Uh, I just want to make sure we're not losing any money to the finance minister. I think it's when you get to about half of your yearly budget, or maybe three quarters, or two thirds, or maybe 100% of it. I don't know where your limit is. Uh, it looks like the British contained the rebels in Ireland. By the way, I don't know why I didn't pause and mention how appropriate that is. <laughs> oh wait, no, no, rebels in Ireland defeated the British. Ireland is now independent. Wow, I don't know how I read that backwards, but I did. Very cool. I mean, very cool that that would happen because it's a historical type thing. Ireland always giving the always giving the British trouble. So Fiji, first Fiji, and then the Irish, inspired by, I guess they might call them their Pacific Islander brethren, also initiated a rebellion against the British. Maybe the British would be our next target after Germany. They do have a fair few colonies we could try to take over, and their fleet will mostly be in Europe, around Europe. Although I thought the same thing about France, and they we didn't really able we weren't really able to take advantage of it, but that's okay. Five more months before we can build a dreadnought, and we got more national resources. My God! All right, well this is surely going to be it. It is. So we were four months away. War has broken out, and Russia has joined the war against Japan. Okay, so we got ourselves another double. Another double. No, uh, this series was the first time I ever had, I think, a double war on camera. And now I have two in the same series. No! Where's my surprise attack? Where's my surprise attack? I want my surprise attack. This doesn't seem like my surprise attack. Can I decline? Can I, can I get my surprise attack? You get up to three things... I should have an opportunity for a surprise attack. Huh, no. Well, I can't decline all of them. Let's do one of them. Okay, we have, what do we have here? The Honoka class, all right. Well, that's kind of a fun way to start off the war. Who are we up against, I wonder? Hopefully we can take both, uh, we need to move all our battle cruisers into Northeast Asia, by the way, because that's probably where all the ships are. That's where Russia's fleet will be and where Germany's one colonial holding in this spot, in this area is. 
So. Oh, yeah, this is a convoy raid, so we do expect a lot of ships. Bring them up to squad max. We're up against Aurora type class. We can take them. Ooh, really, really, really light armor. Okay, let's go in. We've identified them, and we're moving in. Here we go. Torpedo range, pretty long at this point. We'll have to watch out for that. And we're hitting them. Some good hits. Aurora, both of our ships took some hits. They're turning back. We're going to just maintain range and the wind side. Uh, it's going pretty even, surprisingly. We're, we have the wind advantage and we have the turret advantage, no doubt. Okay, so the Aurora class here is definitely going down. She may not say it, but she's been targeted and I think she's taken a lot of damage. There might be a little background noise outside, sorry. Actually, yeah, it sounds like a, um, a mother, not even her kids, but a mother who's <laughs> the one, the noisy one. Okay, oh, we launched a torpedo. Well, free fire, sure. Just got to keep ourselves moving so we are not targeted by torpedoes ourselves. This one's probably sunk, but let's try to take, you know, divide and conquer, try to take this. Ooh, great torpedo hit. Try to keep this destroyer out while we're at it. Okay, I'm trying to get us to chase down this destroyer. There it is. Got a few hits. I'm surprised that she's still standing. All right, pursuing the next one. We need to get north of them to once again, once again, recapture the... Where are the... It's somewhere down here. We'll be able to find it, I think. We probably need to pull up with our starboard guns now because we've been firing a lot with our port side, I think. Let's try to switch the ammo up. One good reason why it's nice to have a lot of um, double like the pairs of turrets instead of the center line can do better ammunition. Oh, wow, so we've been greatly slowed down. Damn it, I was changing direction. Chimoko no Dekatsu is probably going to sink. Uh, we're not even gonna bother with her. We're just gonna let her come to a rest. Yeah, there it is. So our only hope now is to sink enough other ships. Oh my God. Well, you win some and you lose some, and we lost this one. So, major victory, even though we sank a light cruiser and two destroyers. I don't know if that's... Oh, it seems a bit lopsided. I guess their ships are only worth half the point value of mine. They're 5,700 ton, 2, 6 inch, 10, 4 inch, quality negative one for their crew. Damn. Well, we just got our butts kicked. That's not a good way to start the war. I, I'm a little dis. I'm actually not just a little disappointed. I'm extremely disappointed that we didn't get um, a surprise attack. I put my destroyers out just so that we could have our supply surprise attack. All right, well, let's bring our battle cruisers back in. That's unfortunate. But let's not be discouraged. It's just two light cruisers. We should have more than enough minesweepers. I did get some more. 40, good. Hopefully that'll help us considering we're up against two nations. Um, by the way, I'm silly. We should have designed our dreadnought. So I'll probably call this video to a close right after whatever, whenever I can. to red. I don't like those. Okay. Edo intercepts. What is the Edo? Azuma? Azumi? Yeah. Okay. That's not bad. There was a point in time when I was really happy to see Azumi, but now I'd rather see the Honoka. Were those last ships Honoka class or Azumi? They were Azumi, right? I'll have to go back and look. No, they were... Oh my god, they were Honoka. Damn, that really sucks. Because they were 27 knot. 
It should have been a victory. I, I'm like I'm thinking more about it. It should have been a victory. That was exactly the. That's exactly what our light cruisers, the Honoka class, was made to do: deal with destroyers and lighter cruisers than itself, which was the case. So. Uh, that things don't always go according to plan, but we I think we did well with our designs and everything. It, it should it was like rock paper scissors. We were rock and they were scissors. So they just happened to win this one though. Okay, very good. That was simple. The Germans giving us a reprieve. So I'm gonna pause the video here because next thing we have to do is actually build our dreadnought. I guess I can tease that a little bit. It'll have to be 13 inch guns, unfortunately. That's really sad. We'll probably make this a light strategic projection type dreadnought. That's what I imagine because uh, you're just not gonna build an endgame ship. You just can't with uh, 13 inch guns. So there'll be another dreadnought. So we'll just do a, a, try to do a very light one. Maybe like 25,000, secondaries like two, all or nothing still, sure, but I just want to make it good enough to fend off against battle cruisers. 2.5 for deck, conning tower down to like, turrets down to 12, let's so make this 13, turret top, three, two, we don't have higher than one, okay, fine. Uh, we need this, like this. I'm gonna take the five inch guns because this is gonna be strategic projection and we haven't gotten quality one for six inch guns yet. We'll take the submerged tubes, yeah, sure. And I think this is gonna be the design. You know what? If ever, this is probably the right time for us to take advantage of this. Let's see, is this true? No, now it's not true. If I take away this superimposed, now it's true. Got it. So it is um, either or, it's not and both. Okay, that settles that one. However, it's cheaper. Aha, we found a, a chink in the armor. Well, I'm gonna do this then. I'm going to do this. I wanna delete this turret just to figure out what the hell's below it. Ah, so can I get rid of that line? Damn it, so let's try to redo that. Oh. So was it like this? Something like that. Okay, this one. Damn it. <laughs> I don't remember what it looked like in here. Fair enough. I mean, come on. This one. Thank you. Uh, let's just make a little smokestack thing. Ah, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, I really like that by accident. All right, so let's get this cheaper. I love the fact that this is cheaper and it's gonna fire at the same arc. That's awesome. Okay, so now uh, I think the price we'll pay for that is that we probably wanna put this one up to a triple or we could just drop this one down to double, but there's no disadvantage for this one being a triple. That's this kind of strange thing. And you know what? This ship is going to be more about running away. So I think we'll leave it 21 knots. We can probably even drop it down a little bit. This is good armor. It definitely can take a hit. How low can we go? Twenty-four eight. Is there anything that I would rather do, rather than 
I mean, it already has 10, 5, and, oh, we want these in turrets, right? So we haven't quite got the technology. Yeah, we haven't done it yet. So these will have to be in casemates, which is unfortunate, but okay, say lovey. 120, let's just go up to a, a, a flat. 25,000, and I'll just get one more thing here and maybe add some conning tower armor. Okay, fair enough. We know Tortugas never want to skimp on the conning tower. I think this is a good ship. Um, how much could I get for reliable? Yeah, too much. I was even thinking about making this long range, being our, our like strategic projection into completely foreign bodies of water. <laughs> But I think I'm going to save this. I, I can't believe we did the whole thing on camera. I've just, what? Doesn't matter though. Hooray. Well, I'll save the design and we'll revisit it at the beginning of next episode. So, whoops, not speed, normal. Good God. Save that. So that's what we have right now. I think I like it. It seems reasonable. Um, but let me know what your thoughts are. And then we will continue the war with both Germany and Russia. Kind of an unlikely alliance, but uh, stranger things have happened. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you back for more uh, in the next episode. Until then, take care.